Hello everyone, in this video we will study about pointers and arrays. Concept of pointers and arrays in C and C++ are strongly related. So let's take an integer array of size 3. Then this statement basically means we have three integer variables a0, a1 and a2. Also, we know that size of integer is 4 bytes and this array is having 3 elements. So, the size of the array is nothing but 4 into 3, 12 bytes. Now, let's see how these 12 bytes are represented in memory. So, this can be considered as a part of memory. Memory is very big, so it can extend from bottom and top also. It is a part of memory. Let's say one block here represents 4 byte of memory. Now we know array elements are stored consecutively. So A of 0, if it is stored here, then we are sure that A of 1 will be stored here and a of 2 will be stored here and this complete will be the complete memory occupied by this array and you can see that it is continuous this is a vertical representation of memory however memory can also be represented horizontally from left to right something like this here you can say that if the starting address of the first block is let's say 200 and we know integer has size 4 bytes so the starting address of next block will be 204 it will be 208 also let's say if we have an integer x which is present somewhere here in the memory and is having address 300 and we know it will be an integer so the next block will start from address 304 now let's say we have a pointer which can be declared like this. And let's take two cases. In first case, the pointer is pointing to the address of X. Now if we execute the statement like this, It will basically print the address of X, which is in our case 300. Also, if we print the value present at this address, it will present, it will print the value of X. So let's fill the values. Let's say a of 0 is having value 2, a of 1 is having value 5, a of 2 is having value 1, and x is having value, let's say, 8. This will print the value of x, which is 8. Now, let's try to apply some pointer arithmetics. So, if we try to print the value present at p plus 1, in this case you will note that we know p plus 1 is pointing to the address 304 because p is pointing to the address 300 and we have to print the value stored at 304 but since x is an integer variable and we only know its value we cannot be knowing the value of its neighbor so in this case it will print a random value that is a garbage value so you can see that pointer arithmetics does not make much sense if we have a single variable but on the other hand let's say if we have an integer array so if p is pointing to the base address of a which is address of first element of a in this case if we try to print p 
it will print the address of first element of array in our case it is 200 and if you try to print the value there it will print 2 now in this case if we try to print the value of star p plus 1 that is if we try to increase the address in this case the address will increase from 200 to 204 and if we try to print the value there we know that the value at address 204 is 5 because it is the second element of the array so it can print the value 5 so you can see that pointer arithmetics makes sense in case of arrays compared to single variables now there is a fun fact let's say we have two statements one statement is written like this print star a plus one now we know a is pointing to the base address of the array and the second is this without a brackets the difference is just one pair of brackets now can you guys think will the values printed by both of the print statement be same or different yes right it will be different reason being in the first case so in our case address of a is 200 it will first increase the address by 4 so address is now 204 and then it will print the value present at this address so we know the value present at this address is 5 so this will print 5 however in the second case we know address of a is 200 we are first printing the value present at a which is 2 we know the value present at address 200 is 2 now we add 1 to that value so it becomes 3 and you can clearly see that 5 is not equal to 3 now let's say if we have to print all the elements of the array then let's see how we can assess the ith element of the array so each element of the array so element at index i it has an address and a value the address of an element at index i can be represented like an percent a of i or it can also be represented as a plus i similarly the value of the element ith element of the array can be represented as a of i or value present at the address a plus i now if we have to print all the elements of the array we can just run a for loop i equal to 0 i less than 5 or 3 in our case because we have 3 elements and to print the address we can execute the statement like printf percentage t backslash n for the new line and percent a of i or we can also write a plus i in this case because both are same and to print the value Since it is an integer, we'll use percentage d backslash n for next line and the value a of i. Or we can write star a plus i. So the first statement will print the address and the second statement will print the value. And when you will execute such statement in a program, you will note that the address printed will have a difference of 4. So if the address of A of 0 is 200, then the address of A of 1 printed will be 204 
and address of 2 printed will be 208. Also, one more interesting fact. Even though A is a pointer to the base address, If we try to execute a statement like a++, that is increment the value of this pointer, this will not work and give a compilation error. On the other hand, if you will try to execute a statement like this, that is, if you will first declare a pointer which is pointing to the base address and try to execute p++, this will work. And it will increase the value of the pointer by 4. Because the a array is having data type integer. So this was how the arrays are stored in memory and how the pointer arithmetic works. I hope this video was helpful and see you in the next video. Thank you.